today, the radical left has one goal in mind. It's to destroy the underpinnings of the nuclear family by targeting the distinct parental roles that fathers and mothers play. Newsflash for Hollywood. Women want men to be men. Facts. I What's up, YouTube? Poor Man Podcast back with another video. Give me the HBO special. That's the Help a Brother Out special. Hit the like and the subscribe button for more content. Let's get right into the video. Where have all the men gone? That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, once relegated to women's studies, classrooms, and college campuses, the phrase toxic masculinity entered our cultural vernacular a few years ago. Crazy. Now, this was around the time that the American Psychological Association jumped in to warn that males who socialize to conform to traditional masculinity ideology are often negatively affected in terms of mental and physical health. Oh my goodness. Well, the argument is that boys are conditioned to be tough and not show weakness. That's a bad thing, I guess. And then by suppressing boys' feelings, their emotions, then they're likely to be more prone to violence or aggression, <laughs> more likely to end up in prison or in trouble at school. And it's crazy to me because there's a group of people in America that truly believe that women are under attack. And this same group of people will create terms like toxic masculinity. This same group of people will create terms like, like men are trash. This same group, of, and I've heard this before, kill all men. We need to kill all men. I am sick of being a baby factory that produces more men that will just in the future subjugate me. So the only answer to that is to kill male babies and um, just kill any man that you see, like in the streets, like any swing dick, just kill him. I've heard people say, imagine if there was a group of men that came up with the slogan and their slogan was kill all women. Imagine how hard we would come down on that group. It would be absolutely ridiculous. People have to understand that we're bell curve. Like everything, it's a bell curve. On this side, you have murderers, you have rapists. We hate these people. We want to put them in prison. We want to lock them up and throw away the key. Everybody in society agrees on that. On this end, you have people who make iPhones. You have people that make Twitter so you can go on there and talk about how much you hate men. You have people that create Starbucks so you can go and get your pumpkin spice latte every winter, every fall, right? And in the middle, you have the people that uphold these societies. You have coal miners. You have police officers, the people that go lock these people up, the bad people. The men that go and lock the other men up that, that we don't like, they're in the middle. They're the police officers, right? You have people that roof in Texas. You have people that go and fight for your free. Well, at least they believe that they're fighting for your freedom. It may be for natural resources. It, who knows, right? But at least they believe that they're going to fight for your freedom. It's the thought that counts. We're not going to go too far into that, right? But it's the idea that counts. And these are the people that go and sacrifice and uphold this society. These people imagine and create new ideas for society. These people build those ideas. These people try to tear them down and we lock these people up. That's the bell curve. So if you want your pumpkin spice lattes and you want to be able to go to Taco Bell to get or your in Domino's to get your cheesy fat, cheesy breadsticks, you got to be able. It, this is part of it. Majority of the things that men have done for society have been a net good. And that's why we're here. And people who work in gender studies programs, they're dead set against the old confining rules of masculinity. And you'll see this in a highly produced Hollywood <clears throat> conversation. I think there's a model about being a real man in America. And I think sometimes that model is at more sort of stoic, hard, tough, et cetera. My friend Joe Ehrman, who used to be a professional football player, says that he remembers his father just saying to him, be a man, man up, toughen up, don't be a girl. This is how far we've fallen in America. Telling a boy not to be a girl, I guess, is now considered abusive. You're right. It's crazy stuff. We're in an upside down world, my friends. And I think stuff. more people now see right through the attempt that they're uh, making to kind of wrap their attacks on traditional gender roles around an anti-bullying campaign. Well, that's absurd because real men do not bully. We know that. Real men don't beat their wives. We know that. Real men don't hurt animals or children. We know that. Like, of course. All decent people agree on that. And by the way, long before the phrase gender fluid popped up, good parents told their sons both to be a man and to be courageous, valiant, compassionate. Right. right. 
Now, I heard my friend's father say, stop whining and be a man. And he was complaining about something. He said it a lot, actually. It didn't hurt my buddy one bit. He's a great dad today. But today, the radical left has one goal in mind. It's to destroy the underpinnings of the nuclear family by targeting the distinct parental roles that fathers and mothers play. Definitely. Ideally, come on, we all know this. It's better for children to be raised by a mother and a father who are present and involved. Absolutely. Now, we also all know that single moms and dads do their best, but it's much harder. God bless them all. And I say this as a single mom myself. Yet somehow, this idea of the traditional roles, it's threatening to the radicals who see the traditional family, especially traditionally minded men, as an impediment to the ultimate goal of the left of socialism and rewriting of American history. Now, remember, Black Lives Matter had the disruption of the nuclear family as one of its main goals. Hmm. Now, the entertainment industry joined the anti-family, anti masculinity crusade long ago. In tele television and films, male protagonists are often portrayed as kind of goofy, helpless, uh, you know, helpless uh, saps or gender fluid geniuses. From the dance class I've to noticed the this. Room. I've been seeing this in all of our movies. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's only been since Thanksgiving, but it feels like forever. <laughs> Newsflash for Hollywood. Women want men to be men. Facts. Uh, and, and this is what I'm saying. Look at it. While we're continuing to feminize our men, look at what China's doing. If there was any competition, if America had any competition for being the number one superpower in the next 20 years, it would have to be China, right? They're probably their number two. And they're rising. They're rising quickly. Look at what they're doing. Look at their headlines. China says they want more masculine men. China says they banned all pornography. China says that any feminine men that's in their pop culture or in their media, they want them out. They want their kids to look at positive influence, power, positive influences of what it means to be a man. That's what they want their kids to be looking at. While we sitting here with our meat in our hands, arguing about who, who can go into what bathroom, they're making progress. Literally, their strategy for, and, and this is how they've made all their, their strategy has been, look at what America's doing, and let's do the exact opposite of that, and we'll beat them. And let's be complete, it's working. They're doing better. So just make sure you guys can, are working on your Mandarin. Make sure you're working on your Mandarin, because in 15 years, that's where we're all going to be speaking. Obviously, they also want men to be honest and kind and sacrificial and humble as well. But as an old friend used to say, most women I know, even women who work outside the home, prefer a man who will protect, provide, and defend. Yeah. And we don't want men who will elbow us out of the way to primp in the mirror or men whose idea of a fun afternoon is getting a mani-pedi and a facial. No. Remember the man, by the way, the Obama people used in ads to push Obamacare? Well, even Morning Joe all those years ago couldn't stop laughing at him. This guy Which looks, is funny. Looks very young. That's <laughs> crazy. Jim Van Dyke, it you're, looks you're, like you're he's dead. out of a bad Don't No woman want no man. It looks like you. Not a single Of course, all the Pajama Boy like fans that. are totally shocked that young men are flocking to non-effeminate men like Jordan Peterson, who wrote right. 12 Rules for Life. My boy. And they're especially furious that millions are tuning in to listen to manly men like Joe Rogan. Toxic masculinity, which is, that's a hilarious expression, because you need to thank toxic masculinity for all the bridges, all the f all the jets, right. all the rockets, all this toxic masculinity. If you break down all the things that men have invented and all these toxic men have prevented like you from being murdered in war and exactly. protected the country and all the, all the different things that you could attribute to toxic masculinity, most of it's positive. Right. That's why people listen to him. Now, the fact is the natural instinct of most men is to protect women, but that's slowly being beaten out of them by angry feminists or overly feminine men who love submissive types. This seems especially to be the case in more liberal urban areas, and the consequences are horrifying. Now, something that happened in a Manhattan subway car when a woman 
told a perturbed African-American man to take a chill pill. Watch. Say, say the word chill pill. Chill pill. Oh. oh Yo, you wildin'. She a female. What? That's OD. Well, that went on and on, but notice what didn't happen. Not a single man on that train intervened. Exactly. A more shocking incident took place in Philly last week when a woman was raped on the L train with other passengers aboard. Not a single one did anything to help her. And earlier this week in San Francisco, it was a young woman who chased down a man who pushed an elderly Asian lady to the ground. When the woman confronted the assailant, she was stabbed three times. Exactly. Into that video is exactly what I'm talking about. When you talk about men not stepping in to help women when they're attacked by bad men, that's when you're running into trouble. But this is what women want. Because it takes a masculine man to step in when bad people are hurting women. That's what it takes. You think it's going to be the guys like, oh, I want to get my nails done. That's going to help you when you're when you're getting hurt on the train, when you're being assaulted on the train. You think it's the guy that wants his nail do nails done that's going to help you? Or you think it's going to be another woman that's going to that's going to jump in and help you when that man's hurting you? No, it takes masculine men to step up. And most men will do that if they're masculine enough because they masculine men have an innate Develop. We have it innately to want to protect women and children. That's what we've done historically. That's what men have done historically. We fought and died in war for the betterment of women and children. We have shedded blood and have had our blood shed for the sake of what we thought was best for the women and children in our community. And we have been doing that historically speaking. But once you start to feminize men, there will be no men that want to jump up and help you in these situations. And what happens is so many women feel entitled to this chivalrous behavior. Because keep in mind, when a man jumps in to help you, he doesn't have to do that. And when I say entitled, I mean you innate, you believe you inherently deserve something because you're a woman. That is the definition of entitlement, believing you inherently deserve something. So because you're a woman, a man has to jump in and save you. No man has to save you. But masculine men will jump into that position because we have it innately to want to protect women and children. So if you want women and children to be in the safest positions ever, to have strong societies, you need masculine men. China understands this. But for some reason, we can't get it together. Till next time. Back against the wall since that day. My sister's dad and free my dog, you know I pray. Fuck all the time that I didn't lost along the way. It's for my mom and yeah. girls, just know you safe. Uh, every time I had to eat, I really put my life up on the plate. Sorry, mama made a conscious decision.